Hello, I'm Scott Florence and just now what I'm going to be explaining is what is antimatter. Now if you watched my previous video you'll have seen me explain what quarks and leptons are and each of those quarks and leptons have an antipart and these antiparts of the quarks and leptons are formed at exactly the same time as when the normal particle is formed. For example when an electron is formed a positron is formed as well and an electron is identical to a positron the only difference is that it has a positive charge, the amount of energy it has, its mass, and anything that you could think about it is exactly the same as the other one. The only difference is the charge on the positron is exactly opposite to the charge on the electron. Now when these two particles come together, they annihilate on what's called a very simply named matter-antimatter annihilation. Now when they annihilate, they form pure energy, there's no leftovers afterwards. Although what sometimes happens is, after they annihilate, because they have enough energy to make the same particles again, they do form the same particles again. So an electron and a positron could come together and annihilate with each other, and then could go off and form an electron and positron again. Now this does actually have a real world use, because believe it or not, Electron-positron annihilation is used in medicine, or to be more specific, in PET scans. But I'm not going to go into that right now. Now there's a bit of a mystery about antimatter, because there ought to be exactly the same amount of antimatter as there is matter in the universe. But it tends not to be around us. Everything that we see is made out of regular old matter. But at the beginning of the universe, Back when the universe was starting to become more transparent and all the energy was forming quarks which formed protons and leptons such as electrons and positrons, why isn't there an equal amount of antimatter around us today that we are aware of? Or why didn't all of the matter and antimatter just come together and form more energy and there would be no mass in the universe? And the theory for why there's more matter than antimatter is because that antimatter has a different decay rate to regular matter, meaning that for about every billion of matter-antimatter pairs that were formed at the Big Bang, about one survived and one atom of matter. And here on Earth we have been able to make atoms of antimatter and we've been able to store atoms of antihydrogen for a short period of time. But if we were able to harness antimatter, we'd be able to form much more efficient energy resources because when an atom of antihydrogen and regular hydrogen come together, they form pure energy from the equation e equals mc squared, which is even many more times more efficient than the nuclear bombs. That's all for now. Remember to subscribe, like and comment down below if you have any questions, suggestions or corrections. And I'll see you next time.